Hey guys, it's your girl Maya K, and we are back with the fifth and the final episode of Living in the Leap. Making space. Making space. I pray that so far you've been extremely blessed by everything that I have recorded over the last couple of weeks. Um, let's just do a quick recap. You know, week one, the first step. God was telling us how important it is to take a step toward the very thing that he has called us to. And often we get caught up in trying to see the whole ladder. We get caught up in trying to see every step before we'll make a move. But God is calling you to take the first step. He will always meet you there. We talked about Psalms 37 and 23, how the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so in knowing that, you understand that every step you take is going to be ordered by him. And then in week two, we talked about the gap God, how he fills in those spaces when we are in a leap of faith. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed because we don't have all the resources that we need, but we forget that we serve a God who did not consider all of those things before we got out there. He considered them. We think that he did not consider them, but he did consider them. He took all of those things into consideration before he sent you out there into your next phase of your career, next phase of school, whatever it is for you. He considered all of those things before he told you to take that first step. So if there is any spaces and finances, friendships or faith, guess what? He fills it in. He fills in those gaps. And then in week three, we talked about uh, being benched. <laughs> that was the one for me. That That's like one of my favorites because we talked about why it looks so crazy when God would send us out here. And then all of a sudden we're in action and then we're not. And he sits us off and he says, sit down for a minute. You need to rest or you need to uh, let me allow some more downloads to come. You need to be still for a minute so I can speak more so you know how to conquer this obstacle in front of you. But we see it as, God, why am I not in the game? Why am I not? Why didn't you pass me the ball this time? And God is the coach. And so we have to honor when he calls us out of the game, when he benches us. It's not necessarily for a whole season, but normally it's for a quarter it's for, uh, it could be a week, it could be two weeks, whatever it is. But when he sits us out, it's always for our good. So being benched is not as bad as it sounds. Um, I definitely encourage you to go back and watch that one because I strongly believe many people who would watch these videos, you're probably somewhere in that space. And then last week we talked about, did God really say? Because when we're in our leaps of faith, there's always the opportunity for the enemy to sneak up and to ask us that question because things don't look like what we think they should look like. We thought we started the business and we were supposed to have our six figures in six months because we watched this webinar that told us that we could. And then God is saying, but I am doing something different in your life. And so when it doesn't look right, sometimes there's a huge drought before we even see a drop of one client or before we see a trickle here or a trickle there. And sometimes that's what it looks like, a trickle here and then a dry spell. And so we wonder, did God really say, we step out and all of a sudden the car breaks down and we're like, that doesn't make sense, God. I'm here. You told me to drive all the way here to this new city, this new state. And now, excuse me, and now all of a sudden my car is breaking down. What is that? <laughs> so I just really encourage you to also go back and watch that one because I find that many people get stuck in that space and they start to backpedal and they go back to the shore, the very shore that God called them away from. So this week, the final, final, final episode of Living in the Leap, unless God says otherwise, is making space. And what he dropped in my spirit in particular um, for today, and I wanna start off with the question, and then of course you see me with my word because it's so important for us to always have scripture as our foundation to go back to, to see, okay, well, how did God do this um, with someone that we may have read about or heard about. And we have stories, of course, modern day stories. And I always say that, and I'm going to share my very own at the end, but it's so good to see it in his word because it just reminds us that God does it again and again and again. His faithfulness never runs out. So I just want to know, are you a ready vessel that is making space for God to pour more into the needs you have, more into the desire you have. And when I think about that, I think about the woman, the widow woman, not with Elijah, but with Elisha. And if we remember in 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, there was a woman whose husband had died 
and she literally knew that there was some debt that needed to be paid okay so this is my version <laughs> and so she was like listen i have a huge debt to pay um my son and i i mean honestly if we could end up dying like this is a huge deal and so elisha said well what do you have and all she had was a flask of oil and elisha said okay well go knock on all your neighbor's doors what up neighbors i need that cup of sugar now the one you the one you offered when i first moved on the block that i didn't need then well I, now i need the sugar <laughs> So uh, it wasn't sugar, but <laughs> he told her to go and to get all the vessels that she could to collect as many jars. Uh, some versions use the word jars and, and she went and she obeyed, you know, and her son, they went and knocked on doors and they came and they bought all of these jars before Elisha. And then he said, okay, now keep pouring, pour the oil into the jars and don't stop. And that is exactly what she did. And as she was pouring, her and her son recognized and noticed that these jars were full and overflowing. And all she had was a little flask. Now, none of the versions that I've read this story in actually say how big the jars were or the vessels were. But I'm betting that they were pretty big because the astonishment that rested on her and her son was so amazing that I bet they were like, where did all of this come from? So these jars must have been pretty big. These wasn't some little baby jars. These jars must have been super lit. And so I really, I thought about this and I said, man, God, are we making space for you? And the reason why I say that is because when you think about what happened when she turned to her son and she said, bring me some more jars. And he said, that was the last one. And the oil stopped running only because she didn't have any more jars. That's the part that I wanna focus on because sometimes we get to a place in our leaps of faith, we took the first step, we understand he's a gap guy, we understand we might get benched, we understand that the enemy's gonna tempt us to question God, did you really say? But sometimes we are only not receiving the more we're asking for because somewhere we run out of space. Whether we've run out of space in our spirit, which obviously we know supernaturally can never happen. But what I mean by that is have we tapped dry? Have you tapped dry somewhere because you aren't quite getting the results you want? You're wondering why God has you in this space where maybe you're even pressing in and you don't hear his voice as loudly as you did when you took your first leap of faith. Or when you took the first step towards your leap of faith and you're like god i don't hear you and so you're starting to get a little lethargic and you're like man this is apathy when it comes to you reading the word of god you're wondering like what's going on i feel like you've left me that is the space i'm talking about so have you is there a spiritual space that you're like literally god needs to fill it but you've allowed um bitterness or resentment or even just plain oh god i, I don't even care have you allowed your heart to grow numb and so god can't even get in there and fill that space with more of the love and joy that you need for this season to sustain yourself until he gives you your next instruction so that's the type of stuff i want you to consider but just think about that the oil only ceased when her capacity ran out some of us i strongly believe this we're in a season where god is stretching our capacity for more of what he has for us and so we know that he's given us a promise. We know that there's this huge desire he's about to fulfill. And for many of us, I strongly believe he's about to fulfill desire after desire after desire. Promise after promise. It's going to break all at once. I love Amos 9 and 13 in the message version because it literally blesses my life every time I read it. Go and read Amos 9, 13. I believe it's through 15. When he talks about how quickly your head will spin as the, the wine pours down from the mountains and for me that symbolizes the greatness of God breaking through over every area of your life remember when we're in the valley that place in the valley is dark and we often don't feel like we're getting the nourishment we need but when that wine starts to drip off the mountain and it's coming directly from God that is when we began to get filled and so you have to remember that making space for God it may require for you to just keep letting him stretch you and you might not see the oil coming in and you feel like well what's going on God I'm, I'm making this space for you well it's because he wants you to be a ready vessel for everything that he's bringing in so the first thing I want you to just keep in mind is that you have to create room for God to move um 
Your leap of faith requires you to make space. And if you're comfortable waiting for God to send signs and relief, you got to get uncomfortable and give God something to work with. So when people say, I'll give you an example. I think about how often we are waiting and we think about God. I need some more understanding. Before I do this thing you told me to do, give me more understanding. Give me more understanding. Yet we so lovingly quote the verse of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So I love that contradiction sometimes because we're waiting for God to give us this full picture understanding before we step out. And God is like, but I didn't ask you to wait for my full picture understanding. You have to lean, like trust me and lean and not lean on your own understanding. I'm sorry, not lean on your own understanding. So because of that, if you're waiting for understanding, let me just tell you this. Over the last 10 years that God has had me on a journey where I've been taking leap after leap after leap after leap. And right now I praise God because I believe I'm in a very settled place where the next leap I take is more or less going to be more so um, in business. Um, yes, of course, leaps can include, you know, moving geographically, but I've done a lot of that. And I know what God has already spoken to me about how my next destination will be with my husband, whoever my husband is, that we will be moving together. It's not going to be like all of this, uh, another move and another move. But um I just want you to realize that over the nine years, almost 10 years that I've been doing this, uh, there wasn't like these clear instructions every time. Um, I think sometimes we're waiting for God to give us all of this stuff. And I really believe firmly that many of us rest on the fact that we don't want to disobey. God, if it's your will, I don't want to disobey. But the problem with that is if it's under, if it's really motivated by fear you're already in disobedience because god didn't give you the spirit of fear so when you say even that like god i just i want to make sure i'm in obedience i want to make sure i'm in compliance with your word i want to make sure that i don't all you're doing really is operating in a place of fear so even with the desire not to disobey god you could really be in disobedience if you're not moving your feet you could be getting stuck in research mode. You could be getting stuck in preparation mode. Let me, let you prepare me, God. Prepare me. Prepare me, God. Prepare me. I don't want to move. I don't want to move yet. You got to keep preparing me, God. Make sure everything is in line. And that's just honestly not the way God operates. Every leap I've ever taken, every move from Atlanta nine years ago, back to Atlanta now, to Hollywood uh, twice when I lived there, to south korea i mean like and even back home those were leaps of faith when i would go back home to philly like none of those was because god was like okay on this day you're gonna do this on this day you're gonna do this on this day you're gonna and it was no no <laughs> no that is not how god operates and i know it gives us great comfort because we look at our calendars we look at our schedules and we feel like it should make sense to that but one thing I learned from one of um, one of my favorite leaders, it was my old pastor from back home. Years ago, I was a member of the, uh, Impacting Your World Christian Center. And Pastor Ray Bernard, I will never forget when he said this. And I was in college at Temple and it have, it's blessed me ever since. You cannot experience God through your senses. If you are trying to experience him through your five senses, you are going to miss him. So obviously we know we can't like taste God and smell God, right? But it's, it's some other senses when you really think about it. So we can't taste, touch, or smell God, right? Now we can feel God in that sense, yes. We, can, we can't see him, but we can get a vision, right? And, and you, you go with me here, you understand what I'm saying. But of course we know that God operates through our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears. And so if we're looking for a sign in our natural eyes, what do we think we're gonna see? It may not be on the natural calendar or a natural number or a clock. It may very well be that God gives you a symbol or a vision and you have to ask him, okay, God, let me take that, write it down and you reveal to me what that means. But you gotta do some work. You gotta do some work to pull out the revelation sometimes. And I think we get really settled on the fact that, well, God, I'm sitting with you every day. I'm praying, I'm fasting, where are you? And that's great, that is a part of this walk. But sometimes God is like, you're not waiting on me. 
I'm waiting on you. You got to give me something to work with. So please keep that in mind. And I just want to say this. I want to speak this. I really feel strongly that many women are about to leap right into flourishing like never before. Many of us are getting ready to leap into a season of flourishing like we have never flourished before. I'm talking in love. I'm talking in business. I'm talking in career. I'm talking in purpose. I'm talking in ministry. I'm talking in assignments. I'm talking nationally. I'm talking everything. Like we are about to flourish like never before. And the challenge with that is that if you are stuck and you're waiting for God to do all of the pieces for you, even with wanting understanding and God, let me make sure I get this right. That is to me kind of more flesh than it is spirit. Because if we look at the context of many people in the word, I think about Moses. He told God, man, look, I'm stuttering. What you doing sending me out here up in here? And I ain't got time for that. And he was scared. And God was like, okay, but I already gave you an instruction. You're not understanding how you're going to be able to speak in order to set people free. How can I talk to Pharaoh? How can I say these things? And they, how can I, I don't even understand my own language. And you think they're going to listen to me. You're looking for God to show you everything. So if he already gave you the city, if he already gave you the business name, if he already gave you what he gave you for whatever the move is, if he told you to build the baby room and you have lost three children or three babies in your womb, you do what God says, because that means that he has something coming to you that is going to literally manifest. And if you're not prepared for that, then what's going to happen? Then you're going to go and you're saying, God, but where were you? And God was like, where were you? I was waiting for you because God can only operate with faith and action. Sometimes we are waiting for God and we're like, oh, well, I just need to see before I take a step of faith. No, God works with faith and action. Faith without works is dead and your works cannot be stuck on your computer. What I mean by that is some of you are stuck in research mode. You have researched this business like for two years now. You literally have researched every method, every webinar, every seminar. You've gone to every conference. You've signed up for everything you can. Every free thing, everything that cost you something. You've uh, you've sacrificed maybe uh, delaying rent payments being on time, more uh, mortgage payments being on time, which I don't know why you would do that, but I, I get it because I've had my moments, not necessarily with rent, but sometimes I'm like, God, I really want to sow this seed of faith. So my car, no, I'm going to just wait like 10 days, something like that. I don't know, but I understand because you really believe it. But some of you have done all of those things and you've given God nothing else to work with. You haven't LLC the business. You haven't put yourself out there on social media or whatever platform he told you to use. All you've been doing is talking about it to a family member who keeps telling you that you can't do it and then you're wondering why you can't do it when we make space for God we make space for God to do it his way not that makes us comfortable there has never been a faith story in the word of God where something was done and where someone did it when they were comfortable I don't I wait please point it out to me put it in the comments because I'm here for it I love learning but I've yet to see a story of faith in the word of God ever <laughs> where literally something was done and someone was comfortable they were taken out of their comfort zone and even if you want to say well my personality you know god knows i'm a little bit more timid he knows that i don't really like no y your personality he made you so he made you and he knows how you are you're fearfully and wonderfully made there's nothing wrong with your personality until you allow your personality and your character traits and the way you are introvert extrovert whatever that is all of that when you allow that to take Take precedence over the God you serve and the instructions he gave you what you're essentially saying God is well you made me this way so I mean you knew I was gonna be a little bit more scared you knew I was gonna be fearful you already knew so you telling me to do something what does that have to do with it because Moses didn't get to say he said it but what what, what happened he still had to go. and God was angry God was like you better get your little life together now listen Gideon did the same thing all right, God, give me give me a sign because it looked like it's way more than them. And God kept shrinking that army right on down. And he said, now you're good to go. And he was like, okay, yeah, that makes no sense. So because we are in such a season, you have to make space for the new things to flourish. 
And some of you are wallowing in your preparation and I need you to come out of that. I encourage you, sister, come out of that. I know I sound really passionate about this and I praise God for that. The Holy Spirit just came rushing in because I felt that strongly for so many women because I know that typically God um, has a lot of women that I'm connected to or that talk to me about their journey. I can tell that I had that bold, fiery, fearless spirit and when he uh, assigns them to me or I meet them or they send me something, whatever it is, I've realized that he sent me because I am going to push you. I am going to tell you to go. He knows that he can trust me with that. And I'm not going to coddle you because at the end of the day, we don't have much time. If we didn't learn anything from 2020, it is we got to do whatever God told, told us to do and tells us to do. Otherwise, the world is going to keep looking crazy. Um, the second thing I want you to realize, and then I'm just going to share some gems, um, wrap up my story, and then we'll be set. We'll be good to go. You got to trust the order God gives you. Um, God may not tell you to find the job first. He may send you to find the apartment first. Um, God does things out of order, and we have to rest in that. And so um, when I think about even this journey here, so when I moved back to Atlanta in October of 2020, all I had was a word from God that said, I heard um, a prophetic word and I knew it was for me. This is a prophet prophetess that has been assigned. I don't want to say assigned directly to my life. I don't know her personally, but for the last almost five years, I have followed her ministry. And every time I've been in a season of a leap of faith, God has literally used her to confirm so much. I mean, beyond so much. And I mean, it's to the point where I'll be like, if I see her post, I'll be like, uh, about 90% of that's for me. Not each one. No, because that would just be now you're idolizing, you know, prophecy. But whenever it was for me, about 90% of the caption, the post would be for me. So I just remember um, it was actually the top of 2020 or the end. It was either December 2019 or January 2020. And I just remember the prophetic word that by the end of September, I was going to be out of the place I was in. It was so direct for me that although she called it an apartment, I knew she was talking to me because I was renting a room in Philadelphia back home. And she said, I see you, woman. There's a window behind you and God has you by the end of September. You're going to be out of that apartment. Now, granted, I wasn't in an apartment. And this is when we have to know how to decipher the parts of the words that are for us. But that window was behind me. And when she said, woman of God, I see you, I almost broke down crying because I knew she was talking to me. Well, I moved to Atlanta October the 16th, 2020, well, 15, 2020, two weeks after she had said by the end of September. Here's the point. I didn't like take that to mean that by exactly September 30th or I didn't take it to mean that, you know, October 1st or this. Is, I just knew that before the fall was out, I was going to be moved or rather before the summer was fully out um, because we know summer ends like September 21st. Uh, I knew somewhere in that that time frame I was to move back to Atlanta. And so I started to put action um, with my faith. I started, I applied to two apartments and I got the second one. The first one I didn't get, I got the second one. Then um, once I had that and she gave me the date and was like, oh, it'll be available October 16th. Here's the beautiful thing about that. My mother's birthday is October 1st. So I knew, you know, God wasn't going to have me leave right, you know, the day before her birthday. You know what I mean? We had just started living together again. We were both in a room from the same um, amazing older couple. We loved them so much. They're like family. And so I knew he wasn't going to have me leave on the 1st. But it was just the fact that I took hold of that word and I worked that word and I got he kept confirming it that whole year. He confirmed it time and time and time again, even when it came to me leaving my job. Let me share this with you. I knew that I had put in for PTO for a vacation for 10 days in August. Well, because COVID hit the conference that I was scheduled to go to, it was only for three days, but I wanted to take off that whole time just to kind of take my PTO. You know what I mean? You earned it, you take it. And so the conference was canceled, but I knew God was calling me to go back and live in Atlanta. So I, the, the way that we had set it up was my mom was going to go with me. I was going to do the conference, of course, and then we would spend time together. But uh it was going to be for just the two days for the conference and then we would be together for the duration of the vacation. So long and short, 
uh, the conference wasn't there, but I said, God, I still feel you. You didn't change your mind about what you said to me. And I can't let what the world looks like or the bleakness make me settle and say that God didn't say it. I know what you said. So now you have to make a way, but I know I have to give you something to work with. So what we did was I decided I still was going to take it and I was going to Atlanta for the vacation. And that I knew that being in Atlanta, God would somehow speak more to me about what he wanted me to do. But I didn't know what that would look like. So I ended up going on the vacation and my job, here was the tricky thing. There was a VP of um, one of the departments that decided, I'm, I'm being careful with my story, you know how I like to make sure that, you know, nobody's being put on blast or anything like that. But she had went and found out whether or not I would be able to come back to work because there was this whole quarantine for 14 days. Basically, what happened was they said yes. The VPs, these are the higher ups that said, yeah, you know, you can come back to work um, as long as you get tested and the test is negative. And um, I was like, cool. So I went and told my branch manager that at the time. And he was like, well, I don't know. Isn't there a gestation period? And I was thinking to myself, but you just actually asked me a couple of days ago. You were kind of trying to figure out how you guys were going to work it all out with me being away for three weeks. Because you're talking about a seven to ten day vacation plus two additional weeks. Well, here's how God worked it out. He fought back against what they said, even though I had been cleared. Everybody was confused. They was like, that makes no, and I said, it's okay. It is okay. It is okay. I took my vacation. So throughout the whole month of August, I literally came back to work on August 31st. And when I came back to work on the 31st, I submitted my two week notice on that day. My last day at that job was September the 14th, 2020. Because I felt like if there was that much resistance with me coming back, maybe it wasn't so much that they didn't want me there or he just was like, man, whatever, I don't want to deal. There were some things going on, so it's fine. It's completely fine. I don't need to get into that. But what I took that as God saying, your time is up. But he still didn't give me an exact date. I go to Atlanta with my mom. We spend some time together. The Airbnb where I stayed, where we stayed, because we had the whole Airbnb, Airbnb to ourselves. The Airbnb where I stayed, there was a property manager who is who was over the Airbnb who managed the property. Not only did we get it for, on a discount because, you know, during the season of COVID, they were like giving discounts, especially if you did a whole week or something like that. And I think we only did like five days and four nights. But not only did we pay like a reduced rate, that woman today is my boss. Okay. So God knew there was an Airbnb that we were gonna stay at, where a property manager was in need of an administrative assistant or an admin, which actually I'm like the assistant property manager, but he knew that she, her business was growing and that she needed the support and help. I had no idea. All I heard in my spirit while I was there, we were there. And then when I got back home, I kept hearing property management. Cause now remember I had those 14 days to quarantine. And so I was like, okay, I don't know. You know what I mean? But when I got back home to write the review for the Airbnb, property management was in my spirit. And I said to myself, okay, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to go for it. I sent her a message after the review and she called me. We prayed about it and I have been with her for six months now. Now it's part time and I love it because it also gives me time to do what God called me to do, which is my YouTube channel, my podcast and the coaching business that he has me building. So if you think about that, there was no clear direction in any of that other than Atlanta. Atlanta was all I knew from July 2019 or well, maybe even May 2019 until I actually moved. This That's all I knew. I just knew he was sending me back to Atlanta. I didn't know when. I just knew I kept getting confirmations. And so every time I got a confirmation, I took a step. That was a step I took. I didn't know, I had never been in property management. I've never had a desire to be in real estate. I That's just not me. And so for him to drop that in my spirit and then for me to message her, it was like, boom, and we connected and then she hired me. My last day at the bank back home in Philadelphia was my first day on the job with her. You have to make space. Because I gave them my two weeks notice, that is when an opportunity came forth. Think about that. 
Okay, so yes, I had already communicated with her, but there was no guarantee. She had never said, yes, I'm going to hire you. Yes, you can start with me as soon as you leave your job. She didn't even know the whole details and background of my story. We might have talked on the phone for about 15 or 20 minutes. And that, and most of that was with me praying. And she was just so grateful and so thankful. And she said, we'll see what God does. And I just remember checking in with her again, just saying, um, so is there an opportunity? And then she said, yes, I'm working on that now. But here's a little summary of what it might look like. But she never gave me a start date. She never said it needs to start this date. I took the initiative to put in my two weeks on the 31st. And let me tell you how much I know God was in this. I was supposed to leave the job on the 14th. Now, that was the last day officially at work, and they paid me all the way up until that time. But on September the 1st, I got a text message from the bank saying, you don't have to finish out your two weeks. You will be paid. Please return your keys and your badge. Say no more. I'm on my way. Now, what, whether people want to argue, that's not how you're supposed to do things. It doesn't even matter. God was shutting that door. And because I gave him something to work with, I planted a seed on August 31st, 2020. That's the seed planted into my future. And because I gave him something to work with, he said, daughter, I got you. I'm going to honor this whole thing that you did. Not only am I going to close the door right now and you don't even have to return because your assignment there is over, but I'm also going to make sure they pay you for that time. Come on, somebody, because they made the decision. I didn't say I was quitting on the spot. I gave them because I walk in excellence, right? But my excellent spirit for the whole 12, 13 months that I worked there garnered them to be able to favor me beyond me being there. So I could walk out the door after having even worked there for three weeks. I got paid for all of that time in August, even though I wasn't there. And then I got paid again. And let me just say this. The last um, check that I received, because, you know, you still get like my loans. I had made my loans, so I got the percentage. I had forgot all about that stuff. The last check I received from that job was December 2020, three months after I had left. And it may not have been a much. I think one was like 57. One week, one time I said it was like 117. I was like, oh, I'm still earning commissions. Baby, God has you in the palm of his hand. And I'm going to say it like that again. Baby, God has you in the palm of his hand. If he tells you to do it, stop waiting for this clear, super clear direction Give them something to work with. Make space for God to move. I made space that day. And I was scared out my mind because you have to know the things that I had gone through with my vehicle before, with my car note. I was finally caught all up. I was finally, I had benefits, child. You know, I mean, that, that was it for me. It was the benefits, okay? It's like, gosh, I got my glasses, my contacts. Like, I had benefits, okay? I got my teeth cleaned. I got all the work done. on. So, for me, it was like you're stepping back into the unknown. And this is a very comfortable place for you. But I trusted God. And let me just say this. I did leave. Then, let me tell you, let me just tell you how strategic God is though. And I didn't want this video to be this long, but I'm flowing with the Holy Spirit. Let me just tell you how strategic God is. So on the first was when I returned my, that's, well, when, that's when I got the text rather. I got the text saying you can return your keys. And so I made a decision. I said, okay, well, I'll sure enough return my keys tomorrow. When I went to go return my keys, I took everything back and then driving back i pulled up and i think i mentioned this in one of the videos when i pulled back up to the house i picked up my phone and there was an email from my nail manager that email probably wouldn't have come through had i not had i fought it had and it was nothing to really fight but had i been like well why can't i finish out my two weeks and you know what's going on i really wanted to i didn't want to just be sitting around the house well god knew i wasn't gonna sit around the house do you know from September 1st to September the 11th, your girl wrote the book that is now in the details, in the comments, well, in the details section, Warring for My Girls, We Pray Together, We Slay Together, my 14th book? Do you know that in that time, if I still would have been there, now I'm not saying the book wouldn't, got, wouldn't have gotten writ written, but God definitely did his thing in making sure he accelerated the completion of that book. And then that Monday I started, I finished on a Friday. I started the new job that Monday and baby, I was in Atlanta on October 16th. Let me just say this. 
God may not do it in the order that you think he should, but he is always in order. His order is the divine order, no matter how you feel. Do it his way. All right, so some quick gems. Um, making space is not a one-off event during your leap of faith. So just keep that in mind. Um, and overflow isn't always about the things we want to see. I think sometimes when we hear overflow, we feel like we should be overflowing in finances. We should be overflowing with all of these uh, outward things. But God brings uh, overflow of peace. Sometimes during your season of leaping, you need that peace because it will sustain you. When things get a little shaky and you're not really sure if you made the right move or not, and then and the enemy comes with it, did God really say? Um, you know, those times when God is silent and he does that to test you and to strengthen your faith walk. So just keep that in mind that sometimes it's a reflection of what you need most in that season. Overflow sometimes is a reflection of what you need most in that season. So it could be peace keeping you anchored and grounded on the word he gave you um or joy when there's so many things telling you you shouldn't be joyful so just keep that in mind and lastly what is living in the leap like what have we learned after these five weeks you know and here's what god gave me and i love this so much living in the leap isn't about this straight and narrow path to access the vision that god gave you it's about taking hold of God's hand and stepping into destiny one leap at a time, trusting God to step in whenever you come to a pothole, an obstacle, or a fork in the road. Take your leap, sis. Take your leap. Once again, it's your girl, Maya K. Make sure you follow me on all platforms at Writer Maya. I would encourage you guys to make sure you grab Warren for your girls. We pray together. We slay together. Particularly in seasons like this when, as women, God is pushing us into greater dimensions of who we are and who he's called us to be and what he's called us to do. You're going to have to lock arms with some sisters and you want to be able to war for them greatly. And the way I lined out the 30-day devotional is amazing. Um, it covers everything from dreams, visions her health, her marriage, um, and warring for her kids, warring for the blind spots, the things that she can't see. Because sometimes we're locking arms with sisters and they can't necessarily see certain things, but God will give us the insight to be able to see those things to war on her behalf. So I encourage you to go to girlsanthem.biz because here's the thing. There are some books coming in. I know some people wanted uh, personally signed copies and not just the copies from Amazon. They should be here within the next seven to 10 days, um, but there's only going to be 20 copies. So I would encourage you to go over to the website and order now so that you can go ahead and reserve your copy. Otherwise, they're always available on Amazon. Uh, it's $20 for the paper book, um, the paperback, I'm sorry. And then there is the Kindle version for $10. Thank you guys for joining me for this series. It's been amazing. Please, please, please go back and watch all the videos. Share with the women you know in your life and even some guys who are, you know, kind of caught between that rock and hard place of God, what's my next move? Because here's the thing, God is sending all of his ambassadors out into the world in great capacities. And we don't get to kind of choose like what that looks like, but it's also, you might hear this, my sister, but you have a, a brother, like a blood brother who is also in the leap of, uh, faith or in the season where he's about to take a leap and regardless the holy spirit is the holy spirit right so <laughs> the same holy spirit on the inside of uh, women is the same holy spirit on the inside of men so just be sure that as god prompts you you don't overthink it because you may not know why he's telling you to send this to someone but it's for the reason that they need it i love you guys so much be blessed and enjoy your leap of faith live in your leap of faith bask in it